wanted to make. And this is uh, my biggest problem with those in the conscious community is that the problem of sin is, is never addressed. Um, so say, for instance, that I agree with your premise that Christianity is a sham. Let's say uh, it's just wrong. The Bible is wrong. It's erroneous whatever, there's still an issue that, um, that I have that I'm still a sinner. You know, I'm still vile. I'm still corrupt. Um, I've still done wrong. I think no matter what your worldview is, um, everybody admits to not being perfect. Now we don't know what that standard of perfection is, but we know we have not achieved it. And so just all of just human history, there's just been this gnawing at mankind that they're not right with whether it be God or themselves or whatever it may be, that, that they have not lived righteously, that they've done something wrong. And as a result of that, justice needs to be paid. And so the thing with those in the conscious community is they don't have any problem recognizing the sins of, of their oppressors, the sins of those who have wronged them. But it's like, what happens with your sin? You know, no man is without fault. And so in pointing out the sins of those who've done us wrong, it's like we conveniently absol absolve ourselves from, from any guilt, but you will stand one day just as your oppressors will stand one day um, before God and, and give an account um, for their life. And so um, what, what, what do we do with that? And I have yet to hear someone in the conscious community say, hey, um, we've got to live a righteous life or we got to do X, Y, and Z in order to gain righteousness or um, there's someone, uh, we some sort of thing that we pray to, to, to gain some sort of uh, uh, righteousness. I'm not sure how they, uh, how they handle that, you know? Is, is sin non-existent in that worldview? Is there someone who atones for our sin? Because the problem of sin still needs to be answered. And again, from the conscious community, the problem is generally white people. That, that white people are the problem with, with the world and why things are the way they are. Um, and so it never really highlights the problem because so oftentimes uh, evil is, is out there. Evil is, is over there. Evil is whatever the case is. Evil is never here. You know, we, we, we always can easily point the finger at someone else but fail to realize that most of the problems um, that happen are a result of our own sin and just sin in, in general. Um, and so that is never fully addressed. That what do we do with, with evil? What do we do with sin? What do we do with our own sin and our own wickedness and our own evil? And, and, and that's what uh, draws me to the truths of Scripture because Scripture deals with that. Scripture says that you will stand one day before a holy God and give an account. And I know if I were to stand before a holy God and give an account, my judgment would be guilty. So what do I do? You know, scripture says what? That that God cannot just overlook your sin and forgive you. Justice must be paid. These are just concepts that no matter what you believe in, justice has to be paid. Like I said, for the conscious community, they see the sins of their oppressor and say, hey, justice must be paid on behalf of those who have wronged us. But justice is a double-edged sword what is going to happen for all the injustices that you have committed. And just think of your own life. You, you haven't done everything right. Like I said, you don't even have to subscribe to the truths of scripture. You know you did wrong. Whatever it is, the, 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 you're not perfect. Um, so, so justice must be demand on your part, on my part. And so what do we do? We say, hey, I did all these good things. So therefore, don't judge me for my bad things. No, if you're before a judge, you can't say, hey, you know, I gave to the poor and you on trial for murder. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, you must pay the penalty for for your sins, for your actions. And when I heard the gospel that it was Christ who paid the, the penalty for for my um, sins because the wrath of God abided upon me. And there was someone who stood in my place and endured that wrath for me. You see, those who, who object to, to Christianity... Um, they they can't give an, an account where or those who oppose them they they typically reject them christianity is the only religion where i've done nothing but reject god and spit in his face and curse him and he comes and he extends love to me just think about it anybody who objects those in the conscious community are just like you know or any kind of objection 
you know, whether it be atheist, evolutionist, or, or whatever the case is, if I object that, I'm met with disdain, I'm met with reject, I'm met with hate in some cases, um, but Christianity is, even when you hate and you reject, you're still met with grace, and um, that's, that's powerful, man, because I deserve hell, I deserve God's wrath, I've done nothing but do what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, I was my own source of truth, I didn't care about God, I didn't care about living holy like who wants to live holy what does that even mean you know I, I wanted to do the things that i wanted to do and like i said as a result i realized that i didn't bring myself forth that someone gave me life someone gave me breath and that that breath is to be returned to the one who created me and i seek to bring glory to myself i do not seek to bring glory to the one who has created me and realizing my own sin in light of that realizing that I've not just offended, you know, some some random nobody who who means nothing or even just, you know, some government official. I've offended the God of the universe. You know, I have wronged him and um, he just can't overlook sin and, and forgive it. A price has to be paid. And so to those in the conscious community, you know, Christ has has paid my debt. But if if that's not the case, what do I do with my sin? How does my sin get atoned for? You know, there that is the problem. The problem is not white people. The problem is is not, you know, uh systemic racism. That's that's not the problem. All those things are a fruit from the true problem, and the true problem is the heart of man is wicked. And if we don't deal with that, we're never gonna address the real problem because like I said, the problem is always out there somewhere. The problem is never here. Um, so to those in the conscious community, those were my three um, objection, or I wouldn't say objections, points of contention that I would just like you to, to think about. Um, like I said, the first one, Christianity is not a European religion. It's an ancient Near East religion that was always intended to be inclusive to the entire world, those who embrace the gospel. Um, number two, confining religion to race. Um, one inevitably endorses a form of racial uh, segregation and those in the conscious community, it seems like it's just black people who are included into this um, community, thus uh, just being, so it's just kind of an exclusive worldview. So it just kind of rejects the rest of people who are not black. Um, and then the last problem, which I think is, is the strongest um, point or point of contention that I have is the problem of sin is is not addressed. And, and that's a huge problem because for all have sinned. Um, no matter who you are, we, we can recognize sin. And like I said, the biggest example, especially those in the conscious community, they realize the sins of their oppressor, which they should. And justice will be done for their oppressors. But you are not without fault. You have done wrong. You have oppressed people. May not be to the extent of, you know, the slave masters, but you've done wrong. You've not treated everyone justly. You've not treated everyone fairly. You have, you've done wrong, whatever that wrong may be. Um, you know within yourself that, that you've done um, wrong. Um, and so one day you will stand. Um, it's not as if you're gonna die and just cease to exist. No, it's appointed for a man to die and then stand before the judge. Um, so you can deny that all you want, but once you stand before him, you won't be able to point to uh, any of your righteous deeds that you've done. The only thing that you will be able to point to is Christ's finished work on the cross. And if anything, I, I can hammer home is that um, I stand on the gospel. There always be objections to um, Christianity and the Bible and those things. And, and I welcome that. I'll do my best to try to answer the questions. Um, but at the end of the day, there will always be more questions. No one gets saved by answer questions. People get saved because they have come to embrace the gospel and uh, have experienced the, the regeneration work of the Holy Spirit on a, a stony heart um, that is transformed to a heart that, that beats after their creator and just seeks to give him glory and honor. And in that, that doesn't negate any sort of critical thinking or any kind of uh, research that please, uh, to, to my Christian uh, brothers and sisters, please think critically because I, I believe a lot of um, objections, objections to Christianity are, are stemming from those who 
who don't think critically. And so people who are thinking critically can easily kind of uh, poke holes in, in our worldview. And uh, I think uh, when uh, we are able to think critically, we can kind of answer and respond back to that. Again, not that we're going to answer every single question, but just that we can provide a defense. And that's, that's pretty much what apologetics is, uh, just giving a, a defense for, for your faith. And so I just wanted to just just do a little bit of that. But again, apologetics does not save. Um, I, I want to be someone who just stands on the gospel, just very gospel centered, um, yet at the same time doing whatever I can to kind of answer um, people's questions. So um, I'm excited. This ran over like 30 minutes. I don't think it will go that long. But um, hopefully you guys get a chance to check this out, get my take on it. It's going to be like really weird because most people just know me as the quiet person who doesn't really say much. So they're going to be like really shocked. Um, but Jesus made me do it. Um, just for his namesake, I'm willing to get out of my comfort zone and do things that I would normally do because uh, Christ gave his life for me. Um, I haven't heard any greater love story than that. Man, I've, uh, I've hated this individual and he came and he died for me. Um, Hopefully you can you can experience that that same kind of love that someone you've just utterly rejected just diametrically opposed to would just show that type of of love to you and no one has ever done that no one will ever done do that except for uh, Christ so I will uh, begin to uh, wrap this up like I said podcast will be available I'm probably gonna go and and release that right now after I finish uh, wrapping this up. So you can go check out the latest podcast, Is Truth Subjective, on iTunes. Uh, please subscribe to that. Um, if you haven't, uh, go get your copy of Burden of Proof, Using Known Concepts to Reveal Eternal Truths. Um, and again, just my attempt to communicate the gospel, answer some of, uh, I won't say life's hard questions, but each chapter is essentially a question um, forcing you to think critically and um, and answering it, um, I just try to articulate the gospel the best way that I can. Um, so you can actually listen to the entire, well, at least the first 20 chapters on SoundCloud um, of me narrating it. Or you can actually cop the ebook for free if you go to uh, the, my website, BOPpublications.com. You can actually download uh, a free ebook. So I just want to spread the gospel. Um, let people know what changed uh, my life and that I understand, you know, like I said, I didn't grow up in the church, so I, I, I'm able to see both sides of the coin. So to my brothers and sisters in the conscious community, I understand. I love you guys. Um, and just thank you for challenging my own worldview and uh, causing me to do my own research because there's a lot I don't know. Um, there's a lot that I still have to wrestle with within my own faith. Um, so I'm in the same boat, just, just, just struggling <laughs> like, like everybody else, but I'm glad I've got a rock to stand uh, firm on. And that's the word of God, um, the Holy Spirit, and just, uh, just looking to the cross. Um, so like I said, if anything you take away from this is just look, look to the cross, look to the price that was, um, paid for you. Um, so that justice would be uh, satisfied. So I am. I'm wrapping in. I'm wrapping it up. Um, again, uh, check it out. Share. Spread the word. Um, let people know about uh, the gospel because that's the most important thing. God does not need me at all. So uh, thanks. You guys have a great day and a great week. And I'll be uh, talking to you guys later. Peace.